together can draw. What's up? Uh, it's Ken Tron. I'm out here in uh, Bumblebee. My new ride. Everyone named my ride Bumblebee. With a, a re-review of the book that I just read. But if you haven't seen the review previously, I'm going to basically sum all that up. And with a few new things. And uh, from this. And I got this book also as reference to anybody that's following WikiLeaks and what's going on with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. He was arrested in the United Kingdom, and he was holding up this book and reading this book. So it's a book of interest. I bought it first thing and read it. And first thing before I say anything about the book, <clears throat> I want to say that as president, I would found a global news network that works with algorithms to present to the people, uh, news articles that are of our interest, reflective of our our the consensus, what people are interested in seeing in the news, and that way the main page news stories are created through the community's interests, and we could also this way uh, toggle with the algorithms and the news broadcast for our top news stories to be placed there more democratically. Instead of having like CNN or NBC put whatever they want us to see on there in, in addition to the news. Instead of reporting an agenda in addition to the news, we would have an algorithm-based news broadcast that is created through the consensus of what stories get top priority. And if there are any stories that the community wants to be top priority, they could do that in a democratic fashion. So that's the first thing I want to say. And if our president... Donald Trump, what I would do right now, given that Julian Assange is in, in custody in the United Kingdom and with however many countries he's had his problems with, to through the extradition process in the United States for recovering or exposing uh, war crimes committed during the Iraq War, um, which everyone knows Donald Trump believed the Iraq War was a lie. I would also have Julian Assange testify on the source materials of the uh, 30,000 emails released by Hillary Clinton. Everyone knows that those files were given. I mean, every, most people in America know that those files were given to Julian Assange by an insider at the DNC who saw Bernie Sanders being fraudulated in the election process of the primaries in reported it to Julian Assange as an actual news reporter and his test his testimony uh, in Congress uh, as being the source receiver of the source files of the 30,000 emails uh, I would I would summon him to court for that as well as put special security watch on the Clintons to make sure that none of their tentacles are able to reach Julian Assange while he's behind the walls and also that any of her uh, affiliates or representations that, that that she represents any 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 of the people that she represents have also no access to Julian Assange and keep them off him away from him until he can make it to the United States where he can testify as being the recipient of the original thirty thousand emails which cost Hillary Clinton the election in which the last paragraph in this book is about how the United States elections are stolen and bought and paid for going as far back as Theodore Roosevelt and how in this election, in the 2016 election, as things were going as they normally do with the United States elections being bought, stolen, paid for, we have the X factor, which is somebody like Julian Assange who was able to provide information that, that that wrenched the whole process and created an outcome that that was not intended as the electoral system dictates in the United States um, that that's that's what I would do if I was president trump i would I would call Julian Assange into United States Congress to testify as being the source 
of the 30,000 emails that cost Hillary Clinton the election, essentially, and go from there, take it from there, and create a potential for our next elections to have more integrity and security than any other before it. And also, you know, this book, written by a man of privilege, uh, this is the uh, author of Ben-Hur, Gore Vidal, he is a man of privilege who has a genuine nature about what he sees and what he thinks is right in the world, and has used his position and place of high standing in the world to do good in the world. This book is an interview, collection of interviews, uh, by this dude Paul J with Gore Vidal. I read it before, it took a few days of reading it, or kind of. But this time I read it in about an hour. It's about 140 pages, so it's not that many. Uh, I, I just, I pretty much, I didn't read through like who was saying what. I just read through all the context, or I read through all the text, and you know, of course, pick details out of the context. One of the things I like most about in here is he's talking about how he calls it the United States of amnesia, and one of his friends corrects him and says it's the United States of Alzheimer's. I thought that was a really good line. Uh, and yeah, once again, the, the book wraps up talking about a presidential elections being stolen and about Theodore Roosevelt as being the actual uh, dominator in, in the securing the election. <laughs> um, and it talks about 9-11 a lot, and it talks about World War II a lot. And, one, you know, one of the interesting parts about Julian Assange is that he says that, we, we, that our threat to the United States does not come from Russia, it comes from Israel. And it touches on World War II in this book a lot. And it also touches on 9-11 a lot and uh, the elections being stolen by uh, the Bushes. And, you know, I, I just want to stress that really, really hard one time, real heavy. Like, the United States presidential elections serve not a democratic process. They they serve the oligarchy, and they, they're predetermined practically. And there's, they're, they're in accordance with agendas that the people of America ought to be conceiving. And what I think a lot of times is if these foul plays are put into place, then I want control over them to do right with them. That's, if we could have our country right now as it is and just flick a switch to, so that it could do what it's there for, we'd have a great thing on this planet Earth. And... And but like basically like when when it comes to all this stuff and about the the presidential elections being stolen and everything, I mean that's basically what he's talking about. And he talks about how the the dropping of the first nuclear bomb like after the Russians had pretty much defeated the German army already, and then Truman drops the nuclear bomb about how that was kind of like a shot around the world because a big hype at the time was creating like a unified world rule world government, the new world order, and the dropping of the nuclear bomb was, was sort of like a global event to sort of unify everybody and bring everybody together, and I feel unified, do you feel unified? I feel unified in the world, however, I don't approve of the method and mode of the unification, and that's where I want control to actually create what we know is going to work to for the best potential outcome for a grand prevail scenario. And I'm just talking about how in 9-11, about how the media helped to escalate and also cover under the wraps the whole 9-11 happening and investigation. And if you saw the video that I made last, you know that I believe that 9-11 was masterminded by the prime minister of Israel not Osama bin Laden, not Saddam Hussein, not King Solomon, not George Bush, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, I believe masterminded 9-11. And I expect the same conviction from the United States military in pursuit of Benjamin Netanyahu as a suspect of the 9-11 attacks on America, which I, from my research, I determined is for land grab in the Middle East. It was a big land grab, so they use the United States military. And I was thinking about the United States military, too, as I was talking in this book about how 
you know, to be soldiers and everything. They talk about how John Kerry was a soldier. And you see Tulsi Gabbard in the presidential election. She's a soldier. These people are very thorough and have their own states of mind, too. They follow orders, but, like, in their own state of mind. You could imagine to be a soldier in the army and to learn that in a lot of ways our presidential elections are serving an agenda in these wars that we've been you, the, the United States military has engaged in are serving an agenda, an undemocratic agenda, uh, a shadowy agenda. To, to be a soldier and learn that the orders are coming from an agenda other than freedom, peace on earth, being America, being the world leader, that would be a harsh uh, set of information to absorb, but I've never been mad at anybody for changing their minds when learning new information. You could imagine that if you're a soldier, like all these soldiers, all the soldiers in the United States, including the veterans, to learn that our military has been used for serving agendas other than what the United States people's representation would have would have them do, that would be alarming, and that would be very provoking that that would be very provoking to a soldier sometimes when you see things like cr climate change and you see what the, the worst of these agendas playing out the fukushima disasters the the vault were like vulnerable to earthquakes from fracking to be a soldier in the military and to be taking orders from an agenda other than preventing these types of disasters and we're serving the agendas to secure land for a state like Israel, that would be very provoking. Uh, and it's interesting to me to see all these things come to light thanks to people like Julian Assange and Gore Vidal because the powers that be are we. And we're all on this planet together to unify and overcome our worst hurdles and obstacles, we really all need to have a good look in the mirror and a solid reflection to understand that if, we, if we're going to accomplish our goals, these wars are not the path. We need to put them on hold for a moment in time, and that way we could get it right. We have all the tools we need now to get it right. And Gore Vidal is talking about how the tools were used in this book to do wrong. Uh, and... And ultimately, like, this book's calling for, like, a, a real genuine news source references because they're talking about how the media can be used to help create these elections that are not the true democratic process that we are all paying taxes for. And, like, he's talking about how 9-11 was, like, boom, boom, like, done, escalated, and then the next thing you know, the media's downplaying it, we have, like, a false narrative of what actually happened with 9-11, but, it, you know, <sighs> Julian Assange holding this book up, and the last paragraph of it is really striking to me, <sighs> so, I read the book again and again, and it's, there, there's so, it's, it's a thought-provoking book, and it's a revealing book, and it's good to know that there are people that are going to recognize a false agenda being put forth in the book. And, you know, there was one more thing that I, I that I want to kind of like, you know, I want to drop this gem before I hop on this video because I don't want to make another 20 minute video, but I want to drop, drop this gem. Uh, before I hop off, before I hop off the video, and that's the, when it comes to these, like, uh, falsification, fa false elections, and how they do it, one of the things that, you know, Gore Vidal wrote about in the book is that Ohio is, like, a really crucial state for all these sorts of things, and he used, uh, Kerry's election with Ohio to, to bring that to light, how, the voting machines can be flipped. You know, you have the voting machine companies donating to political campaigns, and then these companies are either owned or they have stock held by the same politicians that they're putting their campaigns towards. So they have that symbiotic relationship where this company helps the campaigner, and the campaigner helps the company, but this company happens to be a voting machine company. Diebold, it, they make the voting machines. 
And they also donate to political campaigns and those political campaigners have involvement with the company and the business and everything. And that's how, you know, that's just one example of how the rings work of false elections and falsifying the elections. And, you know, obviously our elections are unsecure and they're designed to be that way at this point. But they said the secretary of state oversees all these things when we deliver false results in an election, the Secretary of State has to make those moves, and the Secretary of State's hands are in everything, and, you know, as a Green, as the Green, as a Green Party organizer, and as a Green Party volunteer within politics, I want to know, how much do we have to pay the Secretary of State to cooperate with, you know, ushering in the most secure elections that we could possibly have on the planet, better than Venezuela's, how do we, how can we work with the Secretary of State and do better than their being, like, whatever kind of corporate kickbacks they take, big pharma, drug company, whatever, you know, some tampon companies want to, like, keep women paying for tampons and everything, they want to pay the Secretary of State to, like, keep that going, like, Hold on, yo. Like, we have trillion dollar transactions on our minds. Like, how much does the Secretary of State need to do the bidding for us? Just for a little bit, so that we could get the most secure elections that the world has ever seen here in America. I want to know, as a Green, how much does the Green Party got to put into all these things? Because that's what's happening anyway. What do we got to do? I'm not saying that that's what I do and that's what I'm going to do. I just want to know. I want to estimate. I want to hear an estimate of how much does the Green Party have to kick back to the Secretary of State so that that person does our bidding instead. There it is. That's my question. I'm out here in Bumblebee right now, riding around in the coop, about to meet up some people with some people and celebrate Cinco D's nutso and have a good day and pray for pray pray to the Dark Lord. For my guy, Julian Assange. And uh, probably like slide the bookstore later and pick up a copy of the Satanic Bible. Alright. Thanks for watching the video once again. I love y'all and have a great weekend.